live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2018. Brought to you by Informatica. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage at Informatica World 2018 here live in Las Vegas at the Venetian Ballroom. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Peter Burris, my co-host this week, uh, analyst at Wikibon, chief analyst at SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. Our next guest is Sanjeev Vora, group technology officer at Accenture, uh, in charge of incubating new businesses, growing new businesses, handling the talent. Great to have you on. Thanks for spending the time coming on. Pleasure, it's my pleasure to be here. So we have a lot of Accenture interviews. Go to thecube.net, type in Accenture, you'll see all the experts. And one of the things we love about talking with Accenture is you guys are in the front lines of all the action. You have all the customer deployments, global system integrator, but you've got to be on top of the new technology. You've got really smart people, so thanks for, for spending the time. So I got to ask you, looking at the landscape of the timing of Informatica's opportunity, <laughs> you got data, which is not a surprise for some people, but you got GDPR happening on this Friday. Yes. You got cloud scale on the horizon. A lot of interesting things are going on right now around data and the impact of customers, which is now pretty much front and center. What's you, what are you guys doing with Informatica? What are some of the things that you guys are engaging with them on and, and what's, what's important to you? Look, we have a very deep relationship with Informatica for many years and we have many, many joint clients in the market and we are helping them, uh, helping them sustain their businesses and also grow their businesses future, right? In, in, in future. And um, I think, I think um, and there's a lot going on, there's a lot going on sustaining the core of the business and improving it on a continuous basis uh, by using new technologies and, uh, and you know, like today's key keynote when Anil talked about the new stuff, I mean, it's, there's a lot of things actually clients require or our customers require for just sustaining their, their, their core. But then I call something in the new, which is basically how you're building your new business models, how you're disrupting the market in your industry, what's new around that. And in that piece, I think that's where we are now started working with Informatica to see what are the pieces we need to bring together to the market so we can uh, generate, uh, uh, to, so that we can help clients or customers to, uh, customers to really leverage the power of technology. And I'll tell you, there are four areas of discussion broadly so that you, know, you get a sense and we can deep dive depending on what you want to see, right? The first one is, uh, I think the customers have now data warehouses which are data 2.0, as it was told in the morning. Yeah. So this is still a 15 years old data warehouses. They're not in the new. So a lot of customers and a lot of organizations, large organizations, including some of organizations like ours, they're investing right now to make sure that they get to data 3.0, which is what Amit was saying in the morning, which is around the new data supply chain. Because without that, you cannot actually get real-time analytics. Right, so you can't generate insights and analytics unless you actually work on your data infrastructure layer below. So that's one area where we are working with them. That's where the cloud comes in. Yeah. That's where the flexibility of cloud comes in yeah. there. The second piece is around, um, around, uh, around data, co data compliance and governance because uh, guess what, I mean, there are regulations which are coming up now which are towards data privacy and data protection. And the data infrastructures which were built 15 years back actually do not handle that so effectively. <laughs> Yeah, right. And being polite, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't built for it. it was they didn't have it to was think about it. Built for that, exactly. So now, now the point here is that now there is a regulation coming in. One of them is GDPR, Global Data Protection Regulation. Uh, it impacts all the global companies who deal with EU residents, um, and now they are looking at how they can address that regulation and be compliant to that regulation. And we believe there's a great opportunity for them to actually invest and see how not only comply to regulation, but actually make this a benefit for them uh, and, 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 and make, the, make the next leap towards building a next level of infrastructure for them and data, right? And that is doing a lot of the data engineering, actually getting data right. And that's a third piece. So the first two are this. So one is infrastructure, second is compliance. And the third piece, and by the way, they're all interrelated finally, but I'm just saying it depends on from where you want to begin your journey, mm -hmm. right? And the third piece is around, I think you got it right, it's about quality of data but actually it is not quality, we call it data veracity. Yeah. It's much beyond quality. We talk about qual more completeness, and also things like provenance, integrity, and security along with it. So if we, and it's very much business context relevant, because what's happening is, you may, you may have heard the stories that clients have invested in data lakes for years yeah. now. It's been there for like yeah. eight, nine years, data lake concepts, and everybody talks about throw it. Throw everything into the lake. And everybody says throw into the lake and then become data swamp. <laughs> that was last year's theme. That was last year's theme. Yeah. And, the, and the reason is because, because it's not that IT is failure. IT actually is pretty advanced. The technology is very advanced. Is that business is not as involved as it should be and is not able to trust the data. And that's where your point comes in, whether you have the right data and trusted data with you. 
Oh, well, we had Toyota on earlier and they said, one of the customers said, we had this 2008 post-crisis thing and then they had all the stuff channel and they had product in the channel and they had the data. They actually had the data, they didn't have access to it. So again, this is like the, uh, the new data center, you know, data first, get it right. And so with GDPR, we're seeing people saying, okay, we got to get this right. Yeah. So there's, there's engineering involved, uh, governance, mm -hmm. application integration. This is all now a new thing. How do you guys advise your clients? Because this is super important, and you guys are, on the, again, on the front edge. As a CTO group, you got to look at the new tech and say, okay, that's baked, that's not baked, that's new, that's old, throw a container around it. <laughs> you know, how are you sorting through the, the tools, the platforms? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there. Oh yes, absolutely. And there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of uh, uh, unproven things as well <clears throat> in the market. So the first and foremost thing is that we should understand what the context in the market right now ha is. The first question is mind is, is everybody ready for GDPR? The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they, have they started into the journey to get, have they started getting into racetrack, right, on the road? Yes, yeah, it depends on maturity of that organization. Some people have just started building a small strategy around GDPR. Some people have actually started doing assessment to understand how complex is this beast and yeah. regulation. And some people have just moved further in the journey of doing assessment, but they're now putting up changes in their infrastructure to handle remediation, right? Things like, for example, concern management, things about things like, deletion, like it's going to be a very big deal yeah. uh, to do, right? I mean, so they are making changes changes to the infrastructure that they have or their IT systems to manage it effectively. Uh, but n I don't think there's any company which probably can claim that they have got it right fully end to end, right? So I think, uh, I think, I think that's happening. Now, how are we addressing? I think the first and foremost thing, first of all, we need to assess the maturity of the customer or the organization. Mm -hmm. Like we actually, uh, we actually talk to them first and understand where they stand, right? Uh, usually we have uh, various ways of doing it. We can have a chit chat and meet the, meet, the, meet, the, meet the person responsible in that company. It could, be a, it could be a chief data officer of a company, it could be a CIO of a company, it could be a chief operating officer of a company, it could be a CISO of a company, depending on who has a baton in the C-suite to kind of handle this problem. So it's different per company, right? So every company oh, has yes. their own uh, yes. hierarchy or need or entry point. There are com companies have different entry points, but we are seeing more of the CISOs and CIOs playing a role in many of the large organizations. And our, you know, our clientele is very large companies, as you know but we see most of these players uh, playing that role and asking for help and asking for having a meeting, starting with that. Uh, in some cases where they have not invested initially, we talk to them, we assess them very quickly, very very easy, quick assessment, in a, yeah. probably in a couple of days or day, and tell them that let's get into a, 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 what we call as, would we have something called as uh, assessment as step one. Yeah. Okay. And that takes four to six weeks or eight weeks, depending on the size of their application suite and, and the organization. And we do it quite fast. I mean, initially we were also learning. Like if you had asked me this question of 12 months back, we had an approach. We have changed approach and evolved that approach now. We invested hugely in that approach itself by using a lot of machine learning to do assessment itself. So we have now a concept called data discovery, mm -hmm. another concept called knowledge graph. Right? And that's software driven, but with it's either all, machine it's learning largely, or? It's largely computer driven. Okay. With human, obviously human and computer, both together. Okay. But it's not only human. A traditional approach would have been to do only with humans. Yeah, that would have been taking a long time. And that's has changed. That has changed with the new era and technology advancement that even for things which are like assessment could now be done by machines as well. Machines are smarter enough to do that work. So we're using that right now. So that's a step one and after that, once we get there, we build a roadmap for them. We ensure that their, their, their stakeholders are agreeing with the roadmap. They actually you know, embrace the roadmap. <laughs> and once that's done, then we talk about remediation to their systems. Right? So you mentioned veracity. One of the, and you also mentioned, for example, the idea of the, uh, because of GDPR, deletion. Yes. Which itself is a veracity thing. So you, it's, a, it's also having uh, uh, verifiable actions on data. So the challenge that you face, I think, when you talk to large customers, and, and John mentioned the Toyota, is the data's there, but sometimes it's not organized for new classes of problems. So, and that's that's an executive issue, because a lot of executives don't think in terms of new problem, new data, new organization. You guys are speaking to the top executives, CISOs, CIOs often, but how are you encouraging your clients, your customers, to think differently so that they become data first, which is kind of a predicate for digital business transformation anyway? 
So I think it's a, <coughs> I think it's a great question. I think uh, it depends again on whom you're talking to in the organization. Um, I, I have a very strong perspective. My personal view is that data is an intersection of business and technology. It is not a technology, it's not a business, right? It has, it's an intersection of both, especially this topic. It has to be done in collaboration between business and technology very closely in terms of how what is the, how you can drive merit out of your data, how you can drive mm -hmm. advantage out of your data. And having said that, I think the important thing to note down is that for every, when you talk about data veracity, the single comment I will make that is very, very, very contextual to business. Data veracity is very, very contextual to business that you're running. Uh, well, but right. problems, right? Yeah. Because for example, go to Toyota, so when the Toyota gentleman came on, and this yeah, is really yeah, important, absolutely. the manufacturing people were doing a great job of using data. Lean is very data driven. The marketing people were doing a great job of using data. The sales people were doing a great job of using data. The problem was, the problems that Toyota faced in 2008, when the credit crunch hit, were not limited they were not manufacturing problems or marketing problems or sales problems, they were a holistic set of problems. And he discovered, yes, yes. Toyota discovered, they needed to say, what's the problem, recast the problem, and what can we do to get the data necessary to answer some of these crucial questions that we have? So, I think you, have, you hit the nail. I can tell, I mean, I think you're, you're spot on. And the one way we are doing right now in addressing that is through uh, what we call as our liquid studios. I'm it's just giving what? I'm liquid, sorry? Studios. Liquid, yeah, studios. liquid Studios. Liquid yeah, yeah. Studios. And I tell you, this concept we started, I don't know if you heard about this from Accenture yeah. before. It's great. We story. started this thing a couple I mean, of years ago. Take a minute to explain this. To explain sorry, the, take a minute to explain that. It's impo important. Explain okay. Liquid Studios. Okay. So, Liquid Studios, so what, when we were thinking about these things, where we would talk to multiple client stakeholders. Exactly the point. They may be working in silos and they may be doing a great job in their department or their function, yeah. but they're not talking across enterprise as to how they can, if you are doing great work, can I use your work? for my advantage and, and vice versa, right? Because it's mm -hmm. all sharing data. Even inside enterprise, forget about outside enterprise, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you will be amazed to know how much sharing happens today <laughs> within the enterprise, right? And I, I mean, you're smiling, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, so the, what we did was we, com we came with this concept and technologies are very new and very advanced and many of the technologies we are not using beyond experimentation. We are still in the COE concept. Well, that's different than enterprise-wide deployment. Like if you talk about ERP today, that's not a CEO, that's an enterprise-wide deployment mm -hmm. in most of the companies. It's all there, like you run your finance on ERPs, right? Most of the companies, big companies. So we felt that technology is advancing, the business and technology CIOs, they all have to still agree on a concept and define a problem together. Mm -hmm. And that's where the studio comes in. So what we do is, it's actually Accenture facility, very innovative and creative space. It's unlike an office, it's very much like new, new thing, it's like very, um, uh, differently organized, structured to generate creativity and good discussion. And we bring in customers there, we have a workshop with them, we talk about the problem for one or two days, we use design thinking for that very effectively. Because one thing with design thinking brings on table is agreement on a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. In a very nice manner, yeah. without confronting. Yeah. In a very subtle manner. So in two days time frame, you get to a pr good problem situation, a good problem definition, and then the studio can actually help you do the POC itself. Because many, peop many times people say, well, I understand the problem, I think I kind of get your solution or what you're proposing. My people also tell me something else, they have a different option to propose. Yeah, yeah. Can we do it together? Can, we just, can, can I get a confidence that I don't want to go an enterprise-wide deployment and put my money unless I see some proof of pudding? But proof of pudding is not a PowerPoint. Yeah. It's an actual working model. It's not? It's not. <laughs> yeah. and that's, that? that's, where, that's where the studio comes in picture because uh, you, know, you won't believe that we do these two days of workshop without any PowerPoint, like without any single slide. So it's creative, it's very agile, very... It's all whiteboarding, like come and talk, it's more facilitation, more facilitation now, more human interaction. And that's why you open up everybody saying, what is your view, what is your view? We use a lot of post-it stickies to kind of get there. I think the business uh, angle is super important, I want to get your thoughts, because there's a lot of problems that can be solved once you identify them, <coughs> but we're hearing terms like competitive advantage. Because when you solve some of these problems, these holistic problems that are, have a lot of interplay, where data sharing, whether it's internal and or external with APIs or cloud native, you start thinking about competitive advantages, being a data first company, oh, yes. we've heard these terms. What does that mean to you guys when you, when you walk into a, uh, an executive briefing and they say, look, it, you know, we've done all this work, we've done this engineering, here's where we're at, we need help, but ultimately we want to drive top line results, be more competitive, yes. and really yes. kind of move with the shift. This is, a, this is more of a, a business discussion. It what, is. What, what do you guys talk about when you have those conversations? I think we, we so first of all, Data was always a technical topic. Do you agree? Like, yeah. if you if you just go back ten years back, data was always a CIO discussion. 
Yeah. Well, Most I, 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 unless I you're in I'd, a regulated industry like financial uh, yeah, services, the, or, yeah, I or, or I guess I, I, I guess I'd say this: that the that the notion of getting data out of a system or getting data into a system was a technical discussion. Yes. But there was, you know, we've always used data for you know yeah. market share, growth, et cetera. But that was relatively simple, straightforward data. And what you're talking about, I think, is getting into considerably greater detail about how the business is really operating, how the business is really working. Am but, I right? Yeah, you're right, considering data as an asset and a, and a discussion in terms of how you can, how can you leverage it effectively, that's what I was saying. And so it is, um, so it is, it's just definitely got a one more level up stature in the discussion that is, yeah. uh, in, the, in the companies and organization. And what we're saying is that's where the business comes in yeah. effectively and say that help me, and help me understand. And by the way, the reason I'm saying, the reason I was, I was making that comment is because if you have ever seen people explaining data 10 years back, it is very complex explanation. Yeah. Schemas, this, yeah, that, the other thing. Yeah. And, well, and it's very hard for a business guy to understand that. Like if I'm a supply chain lead, I don't, I don't get it, it's too complex for me. So what we did, I'm just letting you know how we, how we start yeah. the discussion. The first and foremost thing is we tell them, we're going to solve the business problem, to your point. That's what we think, right? And, and, and every company nowadays, they want to lead in their industry. And the leadership position is to be more intelligent. Yeah, and they got and it's got to hit the it's got to hit the mark. I mean, we had Graham Thompson, the CIO here at uh, Informatica, and he was saying that you go to a CFO and ask them, "Hey, where's the money?" They'll go, "Oh, it's over here. Let me get this out." They know where it's stored at risk management. They say, "Where's the data?" You mentioned asset. This is now becoming a conversation where it's like certainly GDPR is one shot across yep. the bow that people are take, standing up and taking notice. It's happening now. This data as an asset is a very interesting concept. When I'm a customer of yours, say you know, say, "Hey." Accenture, I have a need. I got to move my organization to be data first, but I got to do some more work. Yeah. What's my journey? How do you, I know it's different per customer, depending on whether it's top down or bottom up, we see that a lot, but how do you guys take them through the journey? Is it the workshop, as you mentioned the oh, assessment? Yes. Yes. Take us through the journey yeah. of how you help customers, yeah. because I'm sure a lot of them are sitting out there going now, they're going to be exposed yeah. with GDPR. It's like, yeah. wow, are we really set up for this? Yeah. So I think in the journey, uh, it's a very good question that you asked. The journey can start depending on the real, the biggest pain they have. And the pains could be different on the maturity of that particular organization, right? Um, but I can tell you where, where we are, what, I can tell you what client conversation we are having in a very simplified manner. So they do understand the journey. But yes, when we engage with them, there's a process we follow. We have a discovery process, we have a studio process to kind of have a workshop, get into a POC, get into a large scale deployment solution. Or that's a simple thing, that's a, that's, a, that's a more sequential in nature. But the condition is around four areas. The first and foremost area is many companies actually don't have very well articulated data strategy. They have a very well articulated IT strategy. And when you go to a section in IT strategy, there's a data component in that, but that's all technology. Mm -hmm. About how do you load, how do you extract those things. It talks about data architectures, and it talks about data integration, but it doesn't talk about data as a business. Right, that's where it's not there, right? In some companies they do have, to your point, yes, some companies are very, were always there in data because of regulatory, concerns and uh, requirements, so they always had a, 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 a organization or function which thought data is differently than other, other, com other industries. And those industries have um, more better strategy document or, 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 or more organ they're more organized in that space. But guess what, now companies are actually investing. Yeah. They're actually asking for doing help in data strategies. So that's one entry point which happens, which means, hey, I understand this, I understand governance is required, I understand privacy is required, I understand this is required. I also understand that I need to move to new infrastructure, but guess, I can't just make investment in one or two areas. Can you help me build my strategy and roadmap as to what should be my journey from now till next three years, right? How does it look like? How much money is required? How much investment is required? How do I save from somewhere and invest here? Tell me save to innovate, right? That's a new concept. Yeah. Right, because I don't have so much that you're asking for, so help me, help me gain some saving somewhere else. That's where cloud comes in. <laughs> so, you know, make sure. yeah. so that's one entry point. The second entry point is uh, totally on where the customers are very clear, they actually have right. thought through the process in terms of what they want to go. They actually are asking very specifically saying, "My, I do have a problem in no infrastructure. Help me move to cloud. Help me, that's a big discussion right now. Help me move to cloud, right? So that's one which I call as new data supply chain. That's my language. Which yeah, means I that, like that word actually. Yeah, I'm making your supply chain. Now my supply chain in, in business term, after after explain business, it's different. Yeah. Technical, it's different. Technology, I can explain all the things that you just <laughs> mentioned. In business, I, I explain that there are three C's of supply chain: capture it, curate it, consume it. Yeah. And they say, oh, I get it now. This well, is the, easy. the right. data supply chain is interesting too. When you think about new data coming in, the system has to be reactive and handle new data. 
So you can you have to have this catalog thing, and that was something that we saw a lot of buzz here at the show. This enterprise catalog. What's your take on that? What's your assessment of the catalog impact to customers? Purpose at this point in time. I think it's very important, especially for the customers and large companies who actually have data all over the place. I can I can share some examples. We were talking to one of the customers who had 2,600 applications, and they were they want to go for GDPR. We did, we had a chat with them, and we said, look. Uh, uh, they were work more comfortable saying, no, no, let's not use any machine. I, because when you talk about machine, then you have to expose yourself a bit, right? And I said, look, the machine is not going to be in my place, it's going to be in your, uh, your boundaries of mm -hmm. firewall. But they were a like, little more concerned. They said, let's go with a manual approach, let's do that. I said, fair enough, it's your call. We can do that as well. But guess what, 2,600 2, applications, you can't discover manually. It's yeah. just not possible. Yeah, you need help. You know, a lot of data know. streaming in. Yeah. I, I guess so I'm just letting you know it's very, I'm just answering your question. The, the data catalog is extremely important. If you really want to get a sense of where the data is residing, because data is not in one or two applications all over the place. Well, I'm impressed by the data catalog positioning, but then also when you look at the Azure announcement they had, Informatica had, you're essentially seeing hybrid cloud playing out. It's a real product. Um, and so that's an easy migration to bring in some of those BI tools. Uh, bringing some democratization into, into the data discovery. Uh, Rajiv, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it, love, love the work you're doing. I want you to take a minute just to end the segment out, to explain the work that you do. Uh, you have two roles. Real quick, explain your two primary roles. You got the, you incubate new stuff, which is hard to do, but I'm uh, an entrepreneur, I love, love, love the hard problems. But also you're doing talent. With talent. Kind of, take a minute to explain real quickly those two roles, super, impor super important. Okay, the first one is basically that I, uh, in my role, I, I look at any ideas that are that we can incubate as a business, uh, and we can um, work with an Accenture, different entities within Accenture, to make sure that we go to clients in a much more cohesive manner, and uh, and um, and and see how we can have an impact to our top line. And 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 that's a big thing because our you know we are in services business, and uh, we have to be very innovative to come to know how do we increase our increase our business, right? Any examples that you can share that stuff so, that you worked on? So. One is right now, I'm spending a lot of my time in, on fueling our data business itself. We just recently launched our data business group, right? We, all, we, are, we have, a, we have a, our, our market going in the position is called as applied intelligence, which you may be aware, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which includes data, analytics, advanced analytics, and then artificial intelligence, all put together when we can solve. And you guys got a zillion problem. data scientists, I know that. Yes. You guys have been hiring yes. high, really, really strong people. It's a very strong team. But on the on the but what, what, I, what I feel is that uh, the data is a critical foundation, really critical foundation. Uh, for intelligent enterprise. You can't become an intelligent enterprise unless you have right data, to your point. And right data is, means curated data in the set and fashion, fashion that can help you become, draw more insights of the, uh, from your enterprise. And, um, and, and that's possible if you invest in data strongly, in supply chain of data so strongly. So that's why we are fueling that. So I'm just letting you know that I'm spending most of my time right now to, f to enhance our capability, uh, you know, enhance our power around that and, and yeah. go to market with that. The second thing which I'm investing right now, which is, uh, there are a few more ideas, but one more which could be very useful for you to know, is um, uh, while companies are moving to the new, uh, uh, they have to also, uh, they have to rely on their people. Ultimately, the companies are made of people, mm -hmm. like us, yeah. right? And if you can, if you are not retooling yourself, you cannot reimagine the future of your organization as well. In terms of the people's, their own skills, their yes. job functions. So okay, I'm working yeah, on a concept called workforce of the future. Right? How can, how, only for large companies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Large companies, how can they transform their talent and their even leadership as well, so that they're ready for the future and they can be more relevant. Yeah, and future. this is the argument we always see in theCUBE. Oh, automation is going to take jobs away. Well, I mean, certainly automating repetitive tasks, no one wants to do those, but the value is going to shift. That's where the opportunities are. Is that something how you see that work, future workforce? No, absolutely, it's going to be complementary. We have um, uh, Paul Doughty, whom you know, who's the Chief Technology Officer of Accenture yeah. Technology, Accenture, Accenture as a, as a firm. He, he's a Chief Technology and Innovation Officer for Accenture. Uh, he has recently written a book called Human Plus Machine. They exactly talk about the same concept that we, we actually all of us believe very, very strongly that the future is all about augmenting humans together. Yeah. So there are tasks which machines should be doing, and there are tasks which humans should be doing, and there are tasks which both of them do collaboratively. And that's what we are trying to build. Collabor, we're doing it here in theCUBE, here at Informatica World. Rajiv, thanks so much for spending Sanjeev. the time. Sanjeev, thanks for coming <laughs> on. Sanjeev, thanks for coming on. Sorry, my bad. A little late in the day, but we're bringing it out here. Informatica World, this is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris, here with Accenture inside theCUBE, here at Informatica World in Las Vegas. Be right back with more coverage after this short break. Thank you.